Hey guys, I'm gonna do a quick video on my JB Weld and silicon carbide grips. Uh, I got some requests after my little uh, Rolandito special. Um, I put a 17 MOS um, let's Glock 17 backstrap on there and used the silicon carbide and JB Weld to kind of fill in the gaps and attach it. Uh, as you can see, it just makes it a little longer uh, length of pull. Uh, I felt like it helped keep the gun from twisting around in my hand. The other nice thing is that it allows you um, to kind of uh, change the shape of your grip if you would like. Uh, you can just straight up wrap it in tape and then go to town. Uh, that's what I initially did, um, but then I started kind of messing around with it a little. Uh, this gun, you can see I'm trying out. Uh, I put a little shelf on the bottom. Um, my old gun, I had a magwell that kind of accomplished the same thing. It really shoved my grip up into the gun. Um, but I can't put a magwell on this, so uh, I'm incorporating a little shelf there. Uh, that is just a little strip of aluminum that I have bent and taped on. Um, but you can also, if there's areas where you want more grip, uh, or you want the grip to be wider, thinner, um, you can just put more of the material there and build it up in certain areas. JB Weld, I use the regular stuff. Uh, it gives you more time as it sets up. Um, uh, silicon carbide, you could probably use a number of different medias. Um, this abrasive media I purchased from uh, an online like rock polishing store. It's really cheap um, and this is a one pound bag and I've done several I think two pistols with it uh, uh, painters tape uh, the base layer tape I use is just hockey grip tape um, you can buy it at athletic stores uh, I usually use all black uh, the only reason there's red on there is because I'm getting low on the black tape but uh, you shouldn't be able to see it so just around the edges uh, I put black where you might see an edge coming out uh, other than that, uh, you want something uh, like a mug uh, that you can rest your gun on as it's drying because um, you're going to want to let it sit for a while. Um, with the hockey tape, uh, you only have to go uh, one layer thick. You don't have to wrap it a bunch. It's nice because you can flex it kind of around area. All right, so um, I've just mixed up uh, one pair of the hardener and steel. Uh, they're each one ounce tubes. Uh, just kind of glob it on here, uh, and then I just kind of brush it into the areas with the hockey tape. <clears throat> All right, so I've got it on there very thick, um, but I have it in all the areas that I want. Uh, so now I'm just going to kind of scrape it down. Um, I have the grip underneath pretty much where I want it. Um, I'm not looking to really build it up in many areas, so I'm going to scrape it fairly thin. Um, a lot of times I'll scrape it down to where I see the tape, or you start to see it a little. Uh, and then maybe go back and add a little bit more, but you do want it uh, to be somewhat thick uh, just so that the silicon carbide um, or whatever media you use uh, has room to be pressed into the JB weld. Um, if it's just a, like that would probably be too thin. I don't know if you can see here. You can see how you can kind of see the red tape underneath. Um, there's not a lot of JB weld there to grip the media, so um, I'll end up making this a little thicker, but sometimes you just kind of got to get it down to where you can actually see the shape of the handle again and then go from there.
do. Uh, so, here's the silicone carbide. Uh, basically, just like in kindergarten, we're just gonna pour it on. Let's see if we can get in a little closer here. But yeah, basically, I just dump it on there. I put it on pretty thick, uh, and then I will press it in. And I'll end up doing this a couple times. Um, but I really want that um, stuff pressed into the JB Weld. I don't want it just sitting on top of it. I kind of want it to work its way in. So um, you can see, boom. We'll come around to the other side. And you can feel it as you're pressing into it. You can feel uh, the JB Weld moving underneath it, depending on how much pressure you're applying and in what areas. Um, so it allows you to kind of work it around and press um, the grip into the shape you want uh, as you go. So like I said, you can push it around. Um, you can see, maybe you can see, like right here, I got a little ridge right here. Uh, if I press it, um, one, it's pressing in. You can see now there's some JB weld there visible because I pressed it down pretty firmly, um, but that ridge is gone. So um, you just kind of have to play with it. Um, I will uh, just keep applying this stuff on and just pressing it. And then eventually, it really won't be able to hold anymore. Um, the JB Weld will be like totally saturated, um, which is kind of what I'm looking for. It kind of creates like a Play-Doh-ish substance. Um, but uh, once I get it to the point where it's really um, saturated, uh, with the silicon carbide. Um, then I just kind of start working from the top down, uh, pressing and rolling the material, uh, and that'll work all that excess uh, JD weld underneath that I don't really want. Uh, that'll kind of work it down. So just, just kind of roll with my thumb. I'm pressing it in, and it's kind of working that uh, excess JB weld kind of down to the bottom. So. Um, and then as you do it, it'll push it into other areas, so you kind of have to do it from different angles and go over it in different directions, but this seems to work pretty good. And you can kind of feel areas where it still squishes around or areas where it's pretty firm. And so you'll start to get, like you can see here, this is a buildup. So this is kind of an excess of JB Weld and uh, the silicon carbide. So a lot of times you can just kind of roll it, brush it out of there. Um, and then now we have kind of a bare spot. You can see that. So you can just add some more, press it in good to go so um, so you don't have to roll it from top to bottom but because it's pretty forgiving if you have excess in areas you don't want it you can especially this early um, you can really just like right here I've got a ridge so just rub it off you can see it's like a very like a wet sand um, 
so. So I got a lot of buildup back here. You can see. Got a couple areas here where it's built up that I don't got access. So here, just push that off. Things to consider. Uh, leaving some room, you'll see as I take the tape off, uh, leaving some room around your controls, like your mag release, um, just depends on how much it sticks out, but this adds a certain thickness to the gun, uh, so if you don't leave a recess uh, or an area there, a relief area, um, it can be hard to reach it because you've built up all around it and it's kind of buried down uh, in the grip so uh, stuff to consider um, a lot of times I always build this up high a lot of times I'll end up cutting it down uh, over time um, this time I tried to kind of cut out the areas so that my thumb has room to move and get to the slide stop and stuff but um, sometimes it's just built up a little too much and you got to cut it back because uh, it's interfering with the way you can get to your controls and stuff so um, but it's not too bad if you got to cut some off later. It's not that difficult. You can see when you press it uh, pretty hard, uh, again, there's that JB weld that's kind of being forced out. Um, so you can just kind of apply more and go from there. But it just takes a little working, um, just figuring out the areas where it's built up, where you got access, um, kind of where you want to take it from, where you want to push it to, that kind of thing. Um, but it's pretty forgiving, especially at this phase. And the nice thing <clears throat> is that the JB Weld, um, just by itself, uh, will really run on you. Um, but once you start mixing in this media, it turns it into more of a sandy, uh, wet sand um, type consistency. Um, and it really holds up well, so it doesn't sag on you, it doesn't bleed on you, um, unless you have a lot in a certain area, but for the most part, um, it'll hold its form pretty good. It can be a little tricky, because as you push it from one area, it tends to go into another so right here I'm pressing it down to get this uh, squeezed down uh, more, squeeze out the excess, but it's pushing it into the sides, so then you push it on the sides and it pushes it back, um, so it can be kind of tricky.
One thing too is if you're trying to build up stuff like that shelf, um, you lose a lot of definition with this. So um, earlier I had it uh, a more subtle bump, um, but then I beefed it up a little bit because once you add this, it really does fill in a lot of the little gaps and stuff. So um, like if you're trying to put finger grooves or something up here, um, just remember that this stuff is fairly thick um, and it'll take a lot of definition out. So you kind of got to make some of your features a little more prominent so that they're not lost in the lost when you put on this stuff and it fills in the gaps and stuff. Uh, another thing to consider is this is the stuff they use uh, to make saw blades and uh, use it in uh, certain blasting applications. Uh, so it will tear up uh, stuff that it comes into regular contact with. Um, if your uniform shirt uh, rubs against a part of it or the inside of your sleeves, if you're wearing short sleeves and you're used to uh, touching your gun with your forearm, stuff like that, um, especially when you first do this and there is more of these jagged pieces that are adhered to it, they haven't fallen out over time, um, it will, you know, it can give you a little rash on your forearm where it rubs, uh, it'll wear down your car seats, that kind of thing, but... So as I've gone, I pretty much worked it down. This is all pretty much in, completely embedded. Um, there's some areas that are a little light on the media, so I will just go through and do another kind of sprinkle and press that stuff in. Now that I'm not so worried about pushing excess material because I've pretty much got that all out. So. Uh, I'm just trying to get as much of it to stick as I can. And uh, you want to give yourself some room around the controls, like I said. Um, you want to make sure that there's enough of a relief there that it doesn't block. Um, and then it's still, you know, moldable, so uh, sometimes the edges will kind of get pulled away from the gun when you're peeling the tape up. Uh, sometimes you get some loose strands, uh, but you can just kind of poke them into where you want. You can see here, like this kind of popped up. You can just push it down. 